What's up, guys? I'm Eric, and today we are talking all things Z Remesher. Let's go. Sometimes I wish ZBrush had a counter for all the times you press a specific button because ZRemesher is probably the button that I've pressed more times in ZBrush than anything else I can think of. You can do a whole lot with it and it's extremely, extremely powerful and it's gotten more powerful in the past couple of years and they continue to improve it and add new features. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at some of those features now. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up the geometry tab and go down to ZRemesher. Let's start by just hitting the Z Remesher button in the top left and see what happens. As you can plainly see, it took our extremely high polygon mesh and reduced it down to a mesh that's around 10,500 points. It also did a pretty good job of minding the topology of the model. You can see that there's edge loops around the eyes and edge loops around the mouth. But one thing it missed was a line down the center indicating symmetry. And that's because we didn't have symmetry enabled. So let's go ahead and undo and hit X on our keyboard so that symmetry is enabled, and then just hit Z Remesher again. This time you'll see that there is a line directly down the middle of the mesh, and now we know that symmetry is working. The next button on the menu is the Legacy button. This is because up until a few years ago, there was an older algorithm of Z Remesher. I think in ZBrush 2019, they updated it with a whole bunch of new features with a renewed focus on hard surface modeling. Now, according to Pixel Logic, the old algorithm can be useful for characters on organic surfaces, while the new one is geared more towards hard surface. I can tell you as a character artist, I've pretty much only used the new one since it came out. I don't ever really find a situation where I sit here and play between the two. Good to know, and it might be something that you want to mess around with. You'll also notice when we selected the legacy algorithm, a couple options grayed out, and that's because those options were introduced with the new one, and they are not supported by the old model. Let's compare between the current Z Remesher and the legacy Z Remesher. Overall, to my eye, they look pretty much identical. The only thing I noticed was around the eyelids. There's a stronger edge loop defining the eyelid, but that's really only because we had detect edges selected. And I'm not sure if it's any indication of the differences in the algorithms themselves. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is freeze border. So this is a weird one. And if anybody knows, please post in the comments. From my experimentations and testing, freeze border and freeze groups doesn't seem to really work with the current Z Remesher. From what I can tell, it doesn't do anything that it's supposed to. It only creates weird edge loops and geometry. So I think these are legacy features that are meant to work with the legacy version of Z Remesher. But if you know more or have a correction, please let me know in the comments. So the purpose of freeze border is that you can isolate a section of your mesh, give it its own poly group, and then Z remesh just that area while retaining the same ordering vertices between the selected part of the mesh and the not selected part of the mesh. In our example, we can reduce the topology of just this area that we see while not affecting the rest of the model. And here's that example. You can see that the edge flow and topology is rebuilt on the section that we had selected while the rest of it remains unchanged. And you can see along that border there, had to split and do a lot of crazy stuff to the quads around that edge to make sure that those two sections blended. Now the purpose of freeze groups is to be able to retopologize different poly groups of the mesh without the topology influencing the bordering poly groups. So each section is kind of retopologized in isolation while retaining that border like freeze border. So it's trying to keep the areas separate while also rebuilding the topology. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and skip keep groups, keep creases, and detect edges for the time being because we're going to bring up another example for those. The next one you'll notice is the target polygon count. And this is basically a slider that you can adjust the amount of polys that you want to Z Remesh to. And it's sort of an arbitrary number. There might be some equation to it, but I typically just play with the number until I find the distribution of polygons that I was looking for. So by default, it's at five, go lower or higher based on your needs or what you're trying to do. So here's an example of it at five. We can turn it down to one. And here it is much, much lower at one. We lose a lot of our detail, but we do get a pretty clean mesh. This is for our retro 8-bit orc. You'll also notice underneath target polygon count, there's double, same, and half. 
And when you select one of these, the slider grays out because you're basically just picking a preset instead. You're either doubling your current count or trying to keep the current amount of polys the same or you're cutting them in half. Trying to do a quick remesh without worrying about that setting, you can just hit one of those and remesh and then get back to work. Now the target polygon count doesn't work in isolation. It works in conjunction with this setting that you see here, which is adapt. It's basically taking these two settings with a give or take to determine the final output of the mesh. You can adjust the adaptive size all the way from 0 to 100 and the adaptive size is doing two things. One, it's determining if it should use quads or triangles. The more adaptive it is, the more willing it is to use triangles. The second thing that it's doing is the higher the adaptive size, the more it's going to adhere to the original shape of the mesh, sacrificing the target polygon count. So the higher that setting is, if it's feeling that it's starting to lose the overall form of the mesh, it's going to add more geometry to make sure it holds it at the expense of the target polygon count. Now here's a quick example of the adaptive strength set to 0 and the adaptive strength set to 100. On the left you can see that it much more closely matched what our target polygon count was. And on the right you can see that it added a lot more polys to hold the form. You can really see this around the nose and around the ears. It added more geometry to make sure that it wasn't sacrificing the shape of the model there. The next thing to look at is curve strength. Curve strength is a setting based on a brush. And so what we need to do is switch our brush to what's called the Z Remesher Guides. What the Z Remesher Guides allow us to do is draw curves on our model that help influence the direction of the topology. In this first example, we're just going to draw a really crazy curve that reinforces what actually happens when we remesh a object using a curve. So as you can see, the topology ended up creating this weird spiral around his jaw, and that was influenced from the curve that we drew. Now let's take a look at a more realistic application of the Z Remesher guides. You typically use these when you really want to reinforce the topology on something like a head or body. And so in this instance, we're using our knowledge of good facial edge loops to draw some loops around the face that help guide the topology. We'll also do one around the ear. So here's the final result. And here's the result compared to the default zero mesher. Now truth be told, you can't really tell a difference. And this is more a testament to how good zero mesher has gotten. But it's a good tool to know about if you're in a situation where the topology is acting really weird when you Z-Remesh and you want to try to have more control, you can use these guides to give you a whole lot of control. The actual curve strength slider will influence how much the Z-Remesher adheres to those curves. So if it's turned way down, it won't really take those as influence. Whereas if it's turned way up, it'll try to use those to guide the topology to its maximum effect. So you can find a balance between letting it do its thing and those guides having influence over the final result. Last but certainly not least, we have use poly paint. And what this allows us to do is actually paint on our mesh to inform how dense the topology should be after the Z remesh occurs. And the way this works is red means that there needs to be way more topology than the other areas. And blue means there needs to be way less topology in other areas. And you can actually adjust the intensity of these colors to infer how intense that final result should be. So you can take that color density slider and slide it back and forth and it'll bring you from blue to red and all the shades in between. Now keep in mind white means that there's no influence. So when you're doing this you want to flood your model with white first and then paint the red and blue hues on top of it. This is especially useful on full characters where you want the face to have a lot more information than the rest of the body. So I might paint the chest or the back or certain areas of the body the blue. Well, I'll paint the front of the face red so that I have enough geometry to add small details on the face and then areas that might be covered by clothing, we can have less geometry. Let's hop over to a different example so we can look at some of these options that were in the middle here and take a look at what those do. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to hop back up to those settings we skipped earlier and use a new example to show them. Here is a simple piece of geometry I made just using booleans to smash a bunch of primitives together. You can see this was the original. Just took a bunch of shapes, crammed them together, but for purposes of showing these tools, it should work just fine. And you can see the result is fairly uniform, but it retains the topology of the original meshes and it has to do 
this kind of crazy stitching to merge everything together. So let's try to clean this up. But first, let's go over these three settings that we looked at. Before we begin, let's just zero mesh this with all settings off to see what happens. As you can see, it's pretty rough. So let's undo. Now, these settings are pretty self-explanatory. Keep groups will retain your poly groups after you Z remesh. So any poly groups that we have assigned, it'll keep those. When you activate keep groups, you get smooth groups. And smooth groups basically determines the blending between two poly groups during the Z remesh. So let's see if we can demonstrate the difference. First, we'll Z remesh with smooth groups set to one. Reset the target polygon count to five and turn on adapt. And that's just gonna help us actually see what's happening a little bit better. Okay, so the mesh still isn't where we want it to be, but you can see that we kept the poly groups for each shape. Let's undo and turn smooth groups to zero and see what happens. With smooth groups set to zero, you can see that the shape is a little more similar to its original shape. At least it's keeping edges, but overall it's still pretty rough looking. Let's undo. We'll turn keep groups off and turn on keep creases. Now, keep creases is pretty self-explanatory. If you have any creases, it'll make sure to hold those after the Z remesh. So in order to demonstrate this, we have to go up to crease. We'll just do a simple crease and you'll see that we have this kind of dotted line at the edges that indicates that the mesh is creased now. And all a crease is, it holds the edge until a predetermined subdivision level and then lets it go. So if you're trying to get a really tight edge, you can crease it to hold that shape. So when we Z remesh with keep creases on, you can see that it held the edge of anywhere that had the crease enabled. You can see these areas got messed up because the creases might have not been detected by the algorithm or just the geometry here is too much for it to handle. Lastly, we have detect edges. Now, all detect edges does is looks for 90 degree changes in the geometry and will create subgroups out of those transitions. So to demonstrate this, let's go down to poly group and we're just going to do a group visible. So this is all one poly group. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on detect edges and Z remesh. You can see that it kept all of our poly groups and just using that 90 degree information on this particular model did a pretty good job of Z remeshing it too. You can see it kept a lot of the areas here, very clean, very sharp with even distribution of polygons. Now, where this did not work is this angle that we have in the back. You can see, since this wasn't a 90 degree angle, didn't really know what to do. And so it did the best it could, but it's not as clean as the rest of the models. So now that we understand these settings, let's see if we can Z remesh this model to be clean. So now that we know the transition between polygroups can really help the retopology, the first thing we're gonna do is isolate this major piece and we're gonna go down to polygroups and we're gonna group by normals. And you can set this angle, 45 is fine. But what this did is it turned each side into its own polygroup and that's gonna help us when we Z remesh. So let's keep detect edges on and let's turn on keep groups and let's Z remesh. You can see now that all of this is very clean. We don't have any issues. Now looking over here, you can see that we do have an issue in the corner down here. And it looks like we have some issues with the shape, at the top and bottom of this piece here. So let's undo and let's turn our smoothing groups to zero and try again. Now we're getting a clean result up top. It looks clean on the bottom and these are staying rectangular like we wanted and the back still looks good. So using these settings in conjunction with one another, we were able to retopologize this to very clean geometry. You could reduce this further and use it for a game model. You know, you could re-subdivide this and continue sculpting on it. For example, we could go back and Recrease these edges and then subdivide a couple times. And now we have a high poly model that we can sculpt on, or if we want to add additional detail. And this really just shows the power of Z remesher and Z brush. This can save you a ton of time just dialing in these settings and Z remeshing and getting really clean, complex geometry. All right. That about wraps it up for Z remesher. I hope that gave you a good overview of all the different features you can do with it. And I tried to give you guys ways to think about how you might use these different features. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory and a lot of them just require some experimentation. If there's anything you feel like I missed, please let me know in the comments. Or if there's other topics about ZBrush that you would like me to go over the same way that we did in this video, 
Also leave me a comment and maybe we'll add that to one of the future videos. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. See you later.